in those 50 years, I've never had anyone write me a letter saying I had come to see those films. Uh, I have had the Princess of Wales for 20 years. I've had a number of letters from people who have said, I've come to the Princess of Wales not just for the shows, but also to read the murals of Frank Stella. Uh, I have, since announcing this project, had 3,000 people tell me that they want to see this building and want to come to Toronto and look at what it is that we're building. I've just come off a panel in uh, uh, the Phillips Collection in Washington and uh, enormous interest, and they're up on their website. I want to use the next uh, four and a half minutes, if I may, to show a film by Charlie Rose where they invited Frank Gehry to write a letter to himself as a child and tell himself what it was that he had to know to become Frank Gehry and some of the adversity that he faced in wanting to do these buildings. I think it will help explain why I believe this could change the city in very positive ways. I may want to leave the room. <laughs> it's a film that was not shown in Canada. It was for American TV, and yet it's all about us, and I hope you'll see my building. At 84, Frank Gehry remains one of the world's leading architects. His unique and modern designs can be seen from Los Angeles to Spain. But he may have found his most important project by looking in the mirror. Gary shares the challenge he faced growing up in his note to self. My younger self probably would not like to listen to what I have to tell him. Dear Frank, I guess the most important advice I have to give to you is to keep a copy of Don Quixote and a copy of Alice in Wonderland as your bedside forever. The world is an upside down place and you have to make your own logic out of it. Believe in yourself and be curious. Follow that curiosity every day in everything you do. You were born Frank Owen Goldberg in Canada in a climate of anti-Semitism. You'll be the only Jewish kid in the elementary school, and they'll beat you up regularly for killing Christ. You can't change this. You can't change who you are, so you got to stay the course. In your family, your mother and father will be tough on you. Your father will be worried that you're a dreamer and you won't mouth much. Your mother will compare you to her friend's children and in her eyes, you'll always fall short. But understand, this is their version of love. They have many, many of their own obstacles to overcome. Watching them struggle through these hardships and survive, pick themselves up, get to work. This will give you a model of courage you will carry with you your entire life as you face probably larger, more complicated crises. Your mother will introduce you to the Art Gallery of Ontario, where you will develop your lifelong love of painting and sculpture. They'll also take you to Nancy Hall, your classical music concert that will ignite your soul. You know that art will be your salvation. In college, you'll figure out how art plays into your life. Glenn Luke, who's your ceramic teacher, will introduce you to architecture and open up the world to you. You'll find a profession that makes sense to you and that gives you a sense of personal pride. You'll be tested again and again. You'll have a teacher tell you that this ain't for you, Frank. Find another profession. Man, just get pissed off. Ignore him. And vow to prove him wrong. Once you find your passion for it, Work your tail off to understand and build expertise on every facet of the profession. No matter what you do, however big or small, make it the best thing that you can because you'll be judged on everything you do. 
Make sure everything you design and build adheres to your highest standards. Push back on people who try to dilute this mission and partner with people who support the best. Take every crisis as an opportunity to do better work. And finally, create buildings and places that engage people. It doesn't mean pandering to historical models of the past. Question everything. Be curious forever. And never forget that life is about people. So make buildings for people. And I always use natural light because it's free. Thank you very much. Um, I'm just playing with everybody to speak and then ask a question. Just going to go in here. And then Karen, this is it. The original was 18 years of separation between four buildings. And now it's 25. At some point, it's 21. And at other points, it's 40. But the average is under 30. Oh, you know. 
allow you to place a therapy, and I understand that you have received good enough explanation from the staff of the city, but is, is, are you placing any value on what the community has to say? Yes, I do, I do place a lot of value on what, what, what the community has to say. You know, it's, it's a big community with many, many different opinions, and uh, we've been receiving a lot of feedback, and uh, change is a difficult thing, and not everybody wants change, and I understand that. Uh, I, I wish there was a lot of things in my life that stayed the same, and I could, you know, and, and, and so I, I'm sympathetic about it. Uh, at the same time, uh, I can't always achieve what I'd like without taking risks and making change. And, and so you know, I, I, I listen. Uh, I think I try to address what I can. We certainly are interested in how this neighborhood performs in terms of the streets, in terms of more space. Uh, of taking traffic off of John Street and so can be closed, and we're looking at how the streetcars work on King Street, and all of those things are impacted by what we're doing. So if you were to hear from members of the community something that you thought was good enough that you would incorporate into your plan to change your plan, because I mean, we know that change is a difficult thing for everybody, would you be prepared to listen to those? I would be prepared to listen and I would love to. You know, I, I want to make the best story I can. I'm not trying to do something that isn't in the city's interest or the city's interest. I'm trying to lift the game and say architecture is important and that we should do a little better than we've been doing. The buildings that we have are not representing us the way that we're going to need to be represented in a very competitive world. This is a city that can't hide in the weeds. This city is going to have to compete with a lot of other cities. I go out there and fight to bring shows into this city against other cities. So I'm a privileged person, I'm very lucky. I get to go to a lot of cities in the world, and I know what the competition is. And that's what this is about. This is about saying this is an important city, and we're going to be able to hold our heads high in our other cities. Thank you very much, and I appreciate that. I think everyone in the city appreciates everything that you do for the city and everything that you have done as well. So. Thank you. Earlier you said in your submission that uh, Toronto's change is not the Toronto that you 